What's up, guys? Welcome into another episode of the Wolverine Live Recruiting Show. I am your host, EJ Holland, and I will be answering all of your questions on tonight's show. But before we do that, I want to make sure to tell you guys to like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel. It's completely free. We're always dropping new content. The live shows are back after I was on vacation in the Caribbean. So We're back at it here on the YouTube channel, so make sure to like this video. It helps get other Michigan fans in here so we have more questions from different people. And subscribing to the YouTube channel allows you to see all our great content and get alerts every time we drop a new video. All right, guys, uh, we do have our first question from John A. Schultz, but really quick before we get into the questions, I also want to remind you guys that we have a magazine as well, so it's not just thewolverine.com. We also have the Wolverine magazine. And right now you can order your special commemorative edition of the Wolverine magazine, which honors the national championship team. Uh, It's written by the staff of thewolverine.com. It celebrates Michigan's remarkable 2023 season and its 2024 college football playoff national championship run. You uh, have the option of ordering two different versions. You can get a magazine version, which is 148 full color glossy pages, uh, or you can get a book version, which is 144 ad free premium glossy pages. So the magazine is going for $19.95. That's the soft cover, obviously, or you can get the book, which is an actual hardback book for $35. 95. Both versions include in-depth features on Blake Corum, JJ McCarthy, and other stars from the national championship team. Exclusive highlights on the dynamic defensive line and the path to the championship, comprehensive game-by-game coverage, stunning photography, insightful column stats, and much more. It's a great gift idea. You can keep it around and look back at it from years uh, for years to come. Um, you know, when it's 20. 40, you can look back and say you have the uh, the special commemorative issue of Michigan's uh, national championship. And actually, the Wolverine contributed 5% of our commemorative issue pre-order sales to the Champion Circle NIL Fund, which supports Michigan student athletes. So order yours today. That's $35.95 for the hardback book or $19.95 for just the regular one. All right, guys, let's go ahead and get into tonight's show. Obviously, huge news today for Michigan as they have hired Tony Alford to be the next running backs coach. And that hire comes by way of rival Ohio State. So Sharon Moore already stealing from Ohio State, getting Tony Alford on the staff and a chance for Michigan to really have a huge upgrade on the recruiting trail. Obviously, Tony Alford um is a guy that's coached up plenty of guys including zeke elliott and jk dobbins mike hart was known uh as an elite developer of talent but obviously not a guy that was extremely active on the recruiting trail so i think tony alford could give you a combination of a guy that's going to get production from his running backs on the roster and also be very aggressive on the recruiting trail so our first question comes from John A. Schultz, and he says, Tony Alford, EJ, how does this help you on running back recruiting, and does it improve our chances to land more Ohio prospects like Marquise Davis? So I want to say this first. Again, Mike Hart was an elite developer of talent. He was a tremendous player at Michigan, an all-time great at Michigan, but he was a poor recruiter. It's okay to say that. It's okay to separate those things. He was, he can be a great player. He can be a great coach, but he wasn't a great recruiter. And, you know, yes, Hart did land Jordan Marshall, but that was his only top 200 running back land in three full cycles at Michigan. And he was also pretty lazy in a lot of other areas like area recruiting and helping other position coaches. Tony Alford has landed nine top 200 or landed nine top 200 backs During his time at Ohio State, he also helped land nine top 200 recruits at other positions. He has great area ties in North Carolina and Virginia, as well as Florida. He's recruited out west for Ohio State. And of course, he's done some great work in the state of Ohio. Now you lose Steve Klinkscale, but you gain Tony Alford 
and Greg Scruggs, two guys with really strong ties in the state of Ohio. So I think they can continue to recruit guys like Marquise Davis and other top Ohio prospects. But yeah, I mean, Tony Alford, I think, is a massive upgrade when it comes to recruiting. So if we're looking at it from a recruiting only perspective, there's no doubt in my mind that Alfred will be a, a, a massive upgrade over Mike Hart. It, it just is what it is. I mean, he's a guy that's going to attack the recruiting trail with an enthusiasm unknown to mankind. He's going to be a guy that's going to help with other positions. He's going to attack his areas. He's going to take as much pride in recruiting as he does in coaching. At least that's my expectation. And that's not something you could say about Mike Hart. Um, and, you know, it was really frustrating to cover Mike Hart. It's not like I had this personal vendetta against Mike Hart, but I only cover recruiting, right? I don't cover the team. If I covered the team, I would sing nothing but praises about Mike Hart because he was a terrific coach. But on the recruiting trail, he lacked so much. The effort just wasn't there. I think Sharon Moore made it clear when he was promoted to head coach that if you're going to be on this staff, you are going to have to recruit your ass off. And I'm not sure Mike Hart was really willing to do that. I think Tony Alford has the experience, the resume, and I think he has the want to. And I think he has something to prove after leaving Ohio State uh, for rival Michigan. So, yes, I do think that Tony Alford is going to be an upgrade over Mike Hart. And I do think it improves Michigan's chances in landing not just Ohio prospects like Marquise Davis, but top national uh, running backs across the country. Mike Hart, I think, was fine. Other than Jordan Marshall, he was really fine with settling for his type of hidden gem guys. I think Tony Alford's going to go after the best of the best at the running back position nationally. And I think he's going to land some guys because, look, yeah, you know, we can talk about NIL all day. And, you know, that's another topic for another question, probably. But I think Michigan is a destination school for elite running backs across the country with the way Michigan runs the football with how run heavy this offense is with the offensive line winning two Joe Moore awards over the last three years, you know, recruits that running back recruits should be flocking to come to Michigan. And, you know, I think with more effort, Mike Hart could have landed not just Jordan Marshall, but other elite running backs. If he had just put in that effort, it was so frustrating because he was such a great player, because he did have a lot of pride in the university. You would think he would have a lot of pride in recruiting. So it was really frustrating to see him just be, you know, apathetic on the recruiting trail. With Tony Alford, I think he's going to take a lot of pride in it. I think he's going to land some top talent. Um, and I think he puts Michigan in a great spot for Marquis Davis. Let's go down to John A. Schultz again, and he says, does the fact that OSU already has three high-ranked cornerbacks in this class help UM's chances with guys like Trey McNutt, Dorian Brew, and Mark Zachary, who are also considering OSU? Yeah, I mean, Ohio State's already put together a really loaded secondary class. They already have a ton of talent on the roster, so that room's getting really full. I think the opportunity's there for Michigan to make some moves with some of those targets but I think a lot of those targets are going to have a lot of NIL offers and that's not going away anytime soon. You know, corner is especially is a premium position when it comes to NIL. And I think some of these guys are going to get some really good offers uh, when it comes to McNutt, Brew and Zachary. I'm not really overly optimistic with all of them. Yes, they've all been to Michigan. They all have Michigan in their top schools group, but I still think it's going to be a tough task for all three of those guys. You know, McNutt is an Ohio State legacy as other national um, offers. Dorian Brew is another Ohio State legacy with national offers. Mark Zachary is considered a heavy Notre Dame lean. So the door is open for Michigan to make a move there. But I, I think with those three in particular, it is going to be tough. But we'll see what Lamar Morgan can do. You know, Lamar has been um aggressive on the recruiting trail already in fact he's already been in contact with mcnutt brew and zachary so he's doing his best hitting the phones um i think that morgan is a little bit of an unknown coming from a smaller school from louisiana lafayette but it seems like through his first you know not even a week yet through his first few days 
he's you know already doing his best to get in contact with these guys and, and trying to make a strong impression. So we'll see. I think getting him, getting these guys back on campus, getting them in front of Lamar Morgan, meeting with Sharon Moore, all of that will tell us a little bit more this spring on where Michigan stands with some of these guys in the secondary. John A. Schultz back with another one. He says, EJ, on a recent The Wolverine podcast, Chris Ballas called you the best in the business and then said, even when he gets threats on visits, he still grinds. Care to elaborate on these threats? Yeah, I have no idea what he was talking about. I really didn't um, realize that was a thing until this show. Like somebody mentioned it on Twitter and I thought, you know, they, it was, I didn't even know they were referring to this. I had no idea that Ballas said anything along these lines. So, I don't know what threats. Um, I mean, obviously, there are a lot of people that don't like me. I mean, I get threats on Twitter every day, uh, especially from Notre Dame fans. Um, but on on visits, I mean, it's not like I'm a recruiter and I'm making visits. Um, I would say maybe, you know, just going to schools, I guess. Like, I don't, I don't know. I've never been threatened at a school. Um, I'll say that, like, obviously, last cycle, we had the Jaden Davis situation. And even after, you know, his father expressed uh, some animosity towards me, I still went out and covered Jaden Davis on multiple occasions. I went out and saw two of his games as a senior after that whole situation had happened. Um, but, you know, it's not like Jaden Davis's dad ever came up to me on the field and tried to fight me or something. Um, you know, I'll say, like, Sam Webb's been really angry with me and has expressed anger at, you know, some events that I was at. I, I haven't covered an event that that Sam Webb was at in a couple of years, though. So, you know, not that I would be afraid of some guy that's like 5'4". So, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I guess people are just angry and they make threats, but it doesn't really bother me. But I don't know what situation he's even referring to. Um, let's go with Tyson Smith. Who is the guy in the thumb? And where do we stand with him? The guy in the thumb is Taz Williams, four-star wide receiver out of the great state of Texas. So I was back home in Dallas this weekend and had a chance to see Taz Williams at the Under Armour camp. And look, this is a guy that's very high on Michigan's wide receiver board. Um, he's ranked as a top 50 wide receiver in the country, top 300 player per the industry ranking. Uh, actually, the rankings vary with him a little bit. Um, he's ranked as a three-star on two sites, ranked as a top 250 um, prospect on two other sites. I personally really like Taz Williams. I think he's come along as a pure route runner. He's a really thickly built slot, really compact. I think the six-foot listing is a little generous, um, but he's a guy that's kind of built um, in, in – the same way as Samaj Morgan, probably a little thicker at this point in his recruitment. I think he can be utilized in the same way. You can put him in the slot. He can return kicks and punts. I think Williams um, has a little bit more speed. You can put him on the outside as well. But, I mean, same type of player that Michigan's been getting, like a Samaj, like an Amarion Stewart. That's what I think of when I see Taz Williams. Now, uh, the thing about Taz is he's not a true native Texan. He's actually a move in from Pennsylvania, uh, specifically from Pittsburgh. And while he lived in Pittsburgh, he trained uh, with two tents, which is the same training program that um, that produced Cole Sullivan, who signed with Michigan last cycle. And that's not his only tie to Michigan. Uh, Ron Bellamy actually played with his mentor and wide receiver trainer, Margin Hooks in the nfl williams visited michigan last year he's set to be back on campus this spring a m's considered the leader here but again williams is a pennsylvania guy he's very willing to leave the state of texas i think michigan is a true contender i think they are right up there for taz williams i think they even have a chance to take the lead on his spring visit i think those ties really help he has a strong relationship with Bellamy and he fits kind of what Michigan traditionally has looked for in their slot type wide receivers. Tyson Smith uh, back with another one. He says, which running back recruits will Michigan go after with Alford that Hart wasn't recruiting? Um, you know, I think there will be several guys that Michigan will go after that Hart wasn't recruiting specifically this cycle. I think there are guys that are really high in the rankings nationally that 
Alfred will really pursue. I mean, you already you already know guys that Hart did pursue, like Marquise Davis and Bo Jackson. But I think Jordan Davison is definitely one to watch. He is a top 100 recruit out of California. And you might remember him. He visited Michigan as an underclassman, but then interest faded as communication dropped off with Mike Hart. And you see Texas is considered the heavy leader on the on three recruiting prediction machine. But Ohio State was starting to gain some traction here over the last month. In fact, Davison was set to visit Ohio State this month. Alfred um, has built a strong relationship with Davison. I think he's going to make him a top target at Michigan. Um, and I think it helps that Davison's already been to campus. He's already familiar with the program. The relationship just wasn't there with Hart. I think it'll be there with Alfred. So Davison is definitely one that I think uh, Alfred will make a priority that Mike Hart wasn't necessarily um, pursuing super hard. Um, another guy that comes to mind is Byron Lewis out of Florida. Um, I'm just getting familiar with him, but Tony Alford made him a top priority and he's had success, you know, in the state of Florida in the past. Um, and I, I believe here's his profile. He's a top 10 running back in the country. And I was going to say, I believe Ohio state has a lead on the on three recruiting prediction machine and they do 63.9% chance of landing him. Um, so Byron Lewis did not have a Michigan offer under hard. He's never been to campus, but he fits that big 10 mold, six foot, 205 pounds. And like I said, I mean, Alfred has had success recruiting this state of Florida in the past. And, you know, you also have Denard Robinson on staff, who is a Florida native and is a guy that could certainly help in this recruitment. So, you know, I think Jordan Davison and Byron Lewis will be two guys that kind of rise up that priority board along with, you know, pre-existing targets like Marquise Davis and Bo Jackson. And I'll say in the 2026 class, Mike Hart didn't offer a single running back, including the number one running back in the country, Savion Hyder. And uh, I exchanged messages with Savion today because Ohio State is considered a major player in his recruitment. And he was really excited about the Alfred hire. I think Michigan will offer him soon. Um, and I do think he'll make a visit to campus. He's always been interested in Michigan, but Hart just never really pursued him for whatever reason, even though he is the number one running back and number six overall recruit in the country out of Virginia. And you see Ohio State second on the on three recruiting prediction machine. So Alfred was doing a fantastic job of getting on him early and building that relationship. And I think that'll transition over to Michigan. And, and this is what I mean, like Mike Hart just didn't get on guys early. He didn't go after the elite guys. And Tony Alfred is the complete opposite. He's going to go after the elite guys. He's gonna get on these underclassmen early. And I think Hyder is uh, just a, a really good example of that. Hyder is a guy that's been interested in Michigan for more than a year. And there was never anything with Mike Hart. So I think that completely changes with Tony Alford. Uh, Tyson Smith back with another one. And he says, do we still go after Iverson Howard? That's a good question. I don't know. I texted Iverson today. He hasn't gotten back to me. Um, I know when Mike Hart's departure was announced a few days ago or last week, I guess at this point, Iverson did tell me that his interest in Michigan is unchanged that he's still very high on the wolverines but he's not a guy that was recruited by tony alford so i don't know how much he knows about alford i don't know if alford is going to continue to recruit him so i think we just have to wait it out and see how that situation plays out sharon moore was in contact with iris and howard and i know that he personally likes him so maybe he'll push alford to recruit howard as well but i think you know with with the change to uh, Tony Alford, I think that we just have to wait and see as he resets the running back board. Tyson Smith's last question is what's for dinner tonight? Uh, for me, I am making coconut chicken tenders. If you've never had them, they are delicious. Uh, they're just basically coconut. So they're just basically chicken tenders fried with some coconut and they are awesome. Uh, it's my wife's favorite. She makes me make them like 
once a week at least. So uh, look up the recipe for coconut chicken tenders. They're great. It's just an upgrade over, you know, just regular chicken tenders. Uh, no, that's not a question. Sorry. John A. Schultz back with another question. He says, EJ, I read your article on Mike Hart on the Wolverine. The $1 sub was totally worth it. Thank you, John A. Schultz. And for anyone that's not subscribed to the Wolverine, you can subscribe today for just $1 uh for one month but ej i read your article on mike hart on the wolverine uh the number the dollar sub was totally worth it and i have to agree he's a michigan legend but the running back coach needs to have needs to be an ace recruiter i believe he meant to say alas Hart was not that well not really a question there john but i appreciate the comment for sure mitchell cotton says ej with the coaching staff finalized how do you think we fared each position coach compared to this time last year strictly from a recruiting perspective better worse or roughly the same i'm excited about the new hires but my expectations are a little you know tempered because these guys are playing for from behind you look at the secondary for example a lot of talent across the country but Lamar Morgan is just building a relationship with a lot of these guys since he didn't recruit them at Louisiana Lafayette. Um, you know, Greg Scruggs has some pre-existing relationships. Brian Jean Mary has some pre-existing relationships. So I think that helped. Um, you know, Tony Alford obviously has been going after the best running backs in the country, but you also haven't, you know, Michigan hasn't figured out a true plan for NIL on the recruiting trail. So right now, there's just so many moving parts. Everything's so new. Michigan hasn't picked up a commitment since January. So I'm really excited about a lot of these new hires, but I think the admin absolutely has to support Sharon more. And I think it's going to take a little bit of time for these guys to build relationships or rebuild relationships, uh, get some of their pre-existing targets on campus or back on campus this spring before we start to really see the wheels in motion on the recruiting trail, you know, spring visits are going to be key. Zach Libby and I previewed, you know, the spring visitors um, on the show yesterday. So if you didn't watch that, I would highly suggest watching that preview. Um, but yeah, I think that right now it's kind of just wait and see, but I do have high hopes uh, for a lot of these new coaches. John A. Schultz says, EJ, if you were compelled to give odds, which big time wide receiver target would you say Michigan has the best shot with Taz, Quincy Porter, Talon Taylor, or any others I'm from getting. Um, of those three, well, let's just focus on those three. I would say Michigan has the best chance with Taz. Like I, like I said, I, I think Michigan can take the lead for Taz. Um, but I also think they're major contenders for both Talon Taylor and Quincy Porter. Quincy Porter is set to come back for his second visit this spring. Talon Taylor is set to come back for his third or fourth visit this spring um you know michigan has a lot of ties to Talon. they've had success in chicagoland quincy porter seems really wide open and loves what bellamy has done knows that there's a desperate need for a big bodied wide receiver and he knows he can make come in and make an impact as a true freshman and you see his on three recruiting prediction machine rutgers has the lead with michigan second that's because he hasn't visited a lot of schools he has visited michigan in the past like i said he's coming in for another visit so i think michigan's in a great spot uh, with all of those guys, but you know, spring visits with Bellamy will definitely be big. Meeting with Sheryl Moore will definitely be big as well. Let's go down to John A. Schultz again. He says, EJ, I know Bellamy just offered running back Jasper Parker. Do you think Alfred will still pursue running backs offered before he was hired? I saw Parker is a three-star. Can he move up and become a four-star? Yeah, um, you know, I think in the same category as Iverson Howard. I think, you know, Jasper Parker, new offer, but told me he has a lot of interest in Michigan, but it's kind of wait and see what Tony Alford does with the running back room uh, and who he makes top targets and who he doesn't. He already has, uh, or he had Ohio State in it with a lot of uh, big time running backs. And I had assumed that he'd have Michigan in it with a lot of big time running backs as well. So with, you know, guys that weren't already on his radar, like Iverson Howard or Jasper Parker, I think it's definitely a wait and see mode. And as far as him becoming a four star, I'm not sure he's starting to gain some traction, but I think I, I still personally have to familiarize myself with him a, a little bit more before I give a true uh, ranking. Ben Rickett says, which new staff member are you most excited about from a recruiting perspective? 
Um, I'm really excited on offense. I'm really excited about uh, Tony Alford. Obviously, we've talked about him endlessly on this show, but, you know, just to kind of reiterate, look, Mike Hart just wasn't a really active recruiter. Yes, he landed Jordan Marshall, and that was great, but that was only his his top 200, his one top 200 land during his tenure here. Um, so I think Tony Alford has a chance to be a massive upgrade, not just with landing elite running backs, but he's a guy that's going to, attack different areas of the country. Mike Hart basically mailed it in with area recruiting, as well as helping other coaches with position recruiting. I think Tony Alford will be a guy that's really well liked, uh, you know, amongst the staff because he'll help them recruit guys, you know, during, I mentioned this at the top of this, uh, at the top of this show, when uh, Tony Alford was at Ohio state, he helped other position coaches land nine top 200 guys. So he was in the mix for nine guys that were in the top 200 that were not running back. So he's a guy that's definitely willing to help out other position coaches to really be involved in his areas. And like I said, he has strong ties to the, you know, the, I guess, mid Atlantic with Virginia and North Carolina, uh, Florida. He's recruited well out in California. He's recruited well in the state of Ohio. So I'm really excited about what Tony Alford can bring as a recruiter and, and being an upgrade over Mike Hart uh, on that front. And defensively, I'm really excited about Brian G. Mary, uh, just because I've covered him forever. You know, I was on the Texas B and, um, you know, Brian G. Mary was the recruiting coordinator and linebackers coach at Texas. And uh, on a staff full of lazy recruiters under Charlie Strong, Brian Jean Mary was definitely a bright spot. Um, I was really excited the first time he was hired at Michigan. He did really well recruiting linebackers that cycle. He even landed Junior Colson. Um, he's a guy that has strong ties in really key states, Georgia, Florida, Texas. I think uh, Jean Mary will position Michigan well for some of the best linebackers in the country. So really excited about his hire. Um, EJ is in the crime area, I guess, since I'm getting all these threats I don't know about. I am in Norfolk, which is not the best city. Like, I mean, I don't know how many people know this, but Norfolk's like a dangerous area, man. There's always like murders and crazy stuff happening. Like I live five minutes down from Brambleton, which is what push a T raps about. So uh, yeah, not maybe, maybe there's people waiting outside of my house. I don't know. Um, and Lei Wu says, who's the best running back you've ever seen as a recruit? Oh man, that is a good question. You know, coming from the state of Texas, I've seen a lot of great running back recruits. Um, man, the best running back recruit I've ever seen. When he was healthy and, you know, he hasn't panned out in the NFL as well um, because he's always injured and he was injured quite frequently in high school as well, uh, was J.K. Dobbins is my personal favorite running back recruit that I've ever covered. I know he's an Ohio State guy, but look, he's a Tony Alford guy, so you can't be too mad at me. Uh, but when J.K. was healthy, he was one of the most explosive dynamic runners that I've ever seen. Also just a great, great guy, man. Just a great kid to cover. Um, lifelong Texas fan. And you know, so, since we're on the topic of J.K. Dobbins, look, I was as close to J.K. Dobbins as I was to J.J. McCarthy or Will or Donovan Edwards. J.K. was my guy. I remember sitting in a hotel room on National Signing Day and J.K. called me and said he was a little unsure about signing with Ohio State. And I talked to him about some things and, you know, he ended up signing with the Buckeyes. But for Tony Alford to go into the state of Texas, to pull a guy like J.K. Dobbins, and this was pre-NIL, to pull a guy like J.K. Dobbins from a small town uh, not too far away from Austin, a guy who had grown up as a lifelong Texas fan, he went into Texas and straight up beat Texas for J.K. Dobbins. I remember the day that J.K. committed and J.K. had this entire thing where he was going to give me a heads up and we we're going to do a big story. And I thought it was going to be Texas and just completely blindsided when he picked Ohio State. And he texted me later that day and was like, dude, I just had to pick Ohio State like they just did a tremendous job recruiting me. So, you know, the job that Alfred did pulling J.K. Dobbins out of Texas, I think, is something that has always stuck with me. 
uh, as I've moved through different beats and, you know, Texas had mutual battles with Ohio State, Michigan obviously has had that as well. And that really gets me excited about Tony Alford, knowing that he did that with JK, being as familiar as I was with JK um, to do that uh, pre NIL, I think gets me really excited because yes, Michigan doesn't have an NIL plan in place for recruiting, but I think Tony Alford's resume as a recruiter speaks for itself. Even when he was at Notre Dame uh, before Ohio state and also pre NIL, uh, he landed a handful of top 200 running backs too. So definitely, um, definitely excited about the Tony Alford hire. And uh, to answer the question, I'll just go with JK. <laughs> um, Zach Libby in the mix. He says coconut. No, man, Zach Libby should not be giving any food takes. Get him out of here. Coconut chicken tenders for life. Um, we are over time, guys. So I'm going to answer these last few questions. If you have a question, make sure to leave it in the chat. Also, you can leave a super chat real quick. That money goes directly to our travel budget. Um, Enle Wu says, is Alfred the best recruiter on staff? Um, I think he might have one of the best resumes for sure. Um, he's one of the more experienced recruiters. I would, I would say him and Brian Jean Mary, who I just talked about are two guys that have extensive resumes that have been in the game for a long time that have landed really highly touted prospects. Obviously there are a lot of aggressive recruiters on this staff, um, you know, from Ron Bellamy to Sharon Moore himself to Grant Newsome. I think all of these guys have a chance to be the best recruiter on staff, Greg Scruggs even as well. I know people were really excited about him and kids were really excited about him at Wisconsin. So um, I think a lot of uh, a lot of talent here on the coaching staff roster, a lot of potential elite recruiters, even Lamar Morgan. I mean, I think I'm excited about him, excited about how young he is, the fact that he's from Texas and has spent some time in Louisiana. Um, I think all of these guys have a lot of potential. And, you know, when you look at Alfred, when you look at Gene Mary, it complements the younger guys like Grant Newsom and Lamar Morgan because they do have the resume and the experience. I think, um, again, a lot of potential across the board. It's just about getting uh, admin support for Sharon Moore, making sure there is an NIL plan in place. So Michigan is not at a disadvantage when competing for elite recruits. Uh, and like Wu says, uh, I think he meant to say, are we still in the mix for DJ Pickett? So DJ Pickett, five-star defensive back out of Florida. Um, I know Lamar Morgan was in contact with his mother yesterday or was it Monday? Um, just within the last 48 hours, uh, Lamar Morgan was in contact with his mother. He was supposed to get on the phone with Pickett here soon, um, working to confirm that that conversation did take place. But uh, yeah, Michigan's still trying here. I think they've fallen behind since, you know, the staff movement and everything that happened this offseason. He was really close to Clink. Obviously doesn't have that relationship with Lamar Morgan. You know, he's talked about some of his top schools and hasn't really been talking about Michigan recently. So I think Lamar Morgan has uh, a lot of work to do. But the good news is Pickett has a lot of family ties to Michigan. You know, we've mentioned that his mom attended Michigan. His brother went to Eastern. His grandmother lives in the area. He's been to Michigan a number of times. Um, but yeah, I think there's some work to do, especially with schools like LSU, which hosted him this past weekend, uh, Miami, Georgia, building uh, a lot of momentum in this recruitment. So yeah, I would say Michigan's still in it, but they've definitely lost traction. So it's up to Morgan to really get that back. And last question of the night, unless anybody jumps in, is who's the best wide receiver from Texas after 2000? Uh, Jackson Smith, Nigma, C.D. Lamb, or Garrett Wilson? Uh, the best wide receiver of those three? Man, I, I loved covering Garrett and Jackson. I didn't cover C.D. Lamb as much. Texas actually went to a camp and saw C.D. Lamb and did not think he was good. So <laughs> I think I saw C.D. Lamb like once or twice. Uh, Garrett, I was super close to. Love Garrett. That's my guy. Jackson's my guy too. Jackson was my neighbor. Um, man, I, I would give... <laughs> I want to say Jackson because he was my neighbor, but I, I give Garrett the nod. Like Garrett was my favorite recruit to cover of those three uh, from a talent standpoint, probably Jackson a little bit more just from a, a kid standpoint. But 
Garrett was a great kid too, man. Uh, I feel like if I hit up Garrett right now, he would immediately respond. Like he was awesome. Um, and just an awesome player to watch as well. Obviously both of those guys are Buckeyes, but, uh, but Garrett will definitely, Garrett would be, Garrett and Jackson would both be on my wall of fame of recruits uh, I've covered. So uh, kind of a weird way to end the show <laughs> talking about Ohio State, but hey, it's Michigan Ohio State Day with Tony Alford. We have a ton of, of coverage on Tony Alfred, what it means for recruiting, what guys he's going to target, names to know, all types of stuff. And we'll continue to have even more coverage on the hire uh, tonight and into tomorrow. We have recruits reacting to the Tony Alfred hire too. So just a ton of coverage over at thewolverine.com. Make sure to subscribe today for $1 for one month. And also like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and we will be back next week. Oh, 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 oh,